I'm Kate, I'm Kate Bjork. Uh, I teach uh, history at Hamlin. Um, among other things, I teach environmental history. Focus of the most interesting work, I think, in environmental history and anthropology is to uh, crit critique and, and, um, and, and give us a better understanding of just how unsustainable our forms of life, uh, um, even our, our forms of civilization are, and to ask some really critical questions about why do we persist with them? Um, and I'm talking about here, you know, reliance on fossil fuels in particular, um, the, the myriad and absolutely entrenched in all our global systems of governments, economy, trade, as well as, you know, wealth and power inequalities that um, destructive environmental uh, practices um, are. And so, you know, in environmental history, um, one of the, the books that we read is uh, The Great Derangement by Amitav Ghosh. And, um, you know, he says, he looks to the enlightenment and asks questions about, you know, how, <laughs> how uh, um, unadapted the, the, the privilege that Western societies have given to um, these ideas of freedom that come out of a historical moment in which ideas of political liberty, you know, we think about late 18th century as age of enlightenment, the beginning of the, you know, scientific uh, privilege of scientific thinking, practical applications of human knowledge in agriculture and all kinds of useful things. Um, you know, steam engine, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, philosophically, a lot of that came out of, you know, these uh, Scottish and uh, British economists um, who were uh, thinking about this moment and uh, as a moment of freeing human beings from nature, in a sense, right? And uh, then uh, Amitav Ghosh in this book, The Great Derangement, and the derangement is that separation of our philosophy, of our, our, uh, of our way of, you know, he's a writer and he gets into analyzing literature and um, uh, why as literature develops across the 19th and early 20th century um, in, the, in the West, does it become more and more interior and individual? Where is the connection in literature between human beings and their environment. And looking around the world, he finds some of that. Um, but uh, he says, you know, surprisingly little politicization, you know, as, as politics and individual participation in emancipatory politics, which, you know, that's the story. It's a great saga of the 19th and, and 20th century. Um, where, you know, where is that engagement with, with questions of impact on, on the environment? You know, I, I don't think, I, I mean, I, 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 I think uh, there's, there's um, value in, I, I guess this is all I can say as a, a professor and a historian, I, I better believe this, that there's some value for us in understanding our, our traditions and our history and our assumptions, doing that in a comparative way so that they're as well informed um, by you know, the traditions in other places as well, um, with the idea that we're, we're going to, uh, we, we can adapt and embrace uh, new kinds of stories and new values, I think.